y'all, welcome back. I'm Mom and Dr. Jones, a board certified OBGYN and mom to four. And today we're talking about vaccinations in pregnancy. What's recommended, what's contraindicated, when and why. And we'll also be busting some myths like flu vaccines cause miscarriage and vaccinations aren't tested in pregnant people. If you're new here, please consider hitting subscribe. We talk about all things reproductive health, gynecology, periods, and so much more. Hit that little subscribe button just below this video and we will jump in to the content now. So what vaccinations are recommended for people who are pregnant? There are generally three, and there's different circumstances under which we would give them. But the three vaccinations that are routinely recommended in pregnancy are flu vaccine, Tdap, which is tetanus, diphtheria, and acellular pertussis, and Rogam. So let's go through those one by one, discuss why they're recommended at what point in pregnancy, and if there are specific people who would or would not be recommended to have them. So let's start with the flu shot. Influenza vaccination is recommended as soon as it is available for that flu season in which the person is pregnant. This is generally going to be somewhere between September and March in the United States. And of course that will vary depending on where you are located. Why do we recommend a flu shot in pregnancy? The flu is known to be extremely difficult for people who are pregnant there is a higher chance that you end up hospitalized and a higher chance that you would end up in the ICU or on a ventilator. And for that reason, we recommend influenza vaccine, the shot kind, not the inhaled mist kind for people who are pregnant. And we'll talk a little bit about why we don't recommend the flu mist later in this video. This decreases the incidence of somebody who is pregnant getting flu and ending up very sick and in the hospital. We know flu shots do not prevent flu 100% of the time. I know this, you know this, everybody knows this, but we still recommend it because it does greatly decrease your chances of having severe disease in pregnancy if you got the vaccine and you still get the flu. So is that making sense? Even if it doesn't 100% protect against the flu, it does protect against the flu sometimes. And if you're in the unlucky population who gets the vaccine and then still gets the flu, you are far less likely to end up hospitalized. This is extremely important because this lowers all kinds of complication rates, both for the person who is pregnant as well as the baby. Okay, let's move on to Tdap. Tdap is tetanus, diphtheria, and acellular pertussis. This is recommended somewhere between 28 and 32 weeks as the optimal timing, but you can give it later than that if for some reason you missed the vaccination during that time frame. So as opposed to a flu shot, which is generally given to protect the person who is pregnant against severe disease, a Tdap shot is given to protect against pertussis in the newborn. Let me tell you a little bit more about that. So if you get pertussis as an adult, are you very likely to get sick? You may feel a little bad, like you have a cold or a cough, but generally adults do really well with pertussis. However, pertussis can be extremely dangerous and even deadly in newborns and even infants up to toddler age. So we recommend giving the Tdap vaccination in particular for the pertussis part of that in pregnancy so that the person who is pregnant can create antibodies and send those through the placenta because that helps to protect the baby after birth. I've linked a ton of studies about flu vaccines, Tdap, all of these things in the description box below. Please feel free to look through those. But one in particular is a study from Baxter et al. And this looked at almost 150,000 infants and found that Vaccination against Tdap during pregnancy greatly lowered the risk of pertussis in the infant up until the time that they were able to be fully vaccinated themselves. So what this tells us is that vaccination helps protect the baby. The other thing with this is that the most common way an infant gets pertussis is from the parents or someone else that is a close caregiver. And for this reason, the American Academy of Pediatrics, as well as every other major medical institution, recommends something called cocooning. And this means anybody who's going to be around baby in the first several months, and maybe even up to a year, should be vaccinated against pertussis. So how often do you need a pertussis vaccine or Tdap vaccine? For the person who's pregnant, we give it in every pregnancy. I don't care if you had a baby last year and now you're pregnant again, we're gonna give it to you again. And the reason for that is that increasing that antibody production helps push those through the placenta to what we call passively immunize baby as well. But if you are just a parent or caregiver an infant, you're not the person who's pregnant, then we recommend a Tdap vaccine at least every 10 years. So if you haven't had a booster for your tetanus shot that includes 
the pertussis component because some tetanus vaccines are are not including that. So you need to look back at your vaccination records and be sure, then we would recommend that you get it at least a month before the baby is born. The other vaccine that I mentioned that we recommend is something called Rogam or Rofilec. Those are the brand names. This is for people who have negative blood types. O negative, A negative, AB negative, doesn't matter. Whatever it is, if your blood type ends in negative, Rogam is recommended. We give this anytime in pregnancy that there is bleeding. So if you have an incidence of vaginal bleeding at any point in the pregnancy, it is recommended that we give you a Rogam shot. And then we also routinely give it at 28 weeks to protect against any transfer of blood that happens at delivery. Why do we care about that? People who have a negative blood type, if there is fetal transfer of blood cells to the maternal system and the fetus has a positive blood type, which we don't know prior to delivery in 99.9% .9 of cases, this can cause development of antibodies which fight against blood cells. Now in general, this won't harm that current pregnancy. This is to protect any future pregnancies. But if you have that, what we call isoimmunization occur during this pregnancy, then it can cause fetal anemia and something called high drops in future pregnancies and is oftentimes very, very dangerous or deadly. So we give Rogam anytime there's bleeding and then prophylactically at 28 weeks, knowing there will be some of that transfer at the time of delivery to protect against maternal antibodies being made, which could combat healthiness in a future pregnancy. We also give another dose of the Rogam or Rofilac shot after delivery if the baby's blood type is found to be positive. We test the cord blood, get the baby's blood type. If it's also negative, then we don't have to give that shot after delivery. But if baby's blood type is found to be positive, then we go ahead and give that shot so that we are just 100% sure you won't be making antibodies, which could cause problems in future pregnancies. So what vaccinations are contraindicated or never recommended in pregnancy? This would be anything that is a live vaccine. MMR, varicella or chickenpox, things like this are not recommended. And that takes us back to the flu mist, which is the like nasal spray flu shot. It is a live virus vaccine. And so for that reason, we recommend against it during pregnancy. Let's go to the myth busting portion of this video, which I am so excited to talk about. And that first myth that I know all of you have heard is vaccines aren't tested on pregnant people. This is so far from the truth. We have so many studies on vaccines and pregnancy and the safety of those for both the baby and the mom. So let me read a couple of those titles to you. I have linked all of these in the description box below. This first one is from American Journal of OBGYN. It is called Safety of Influenza Immunization During Pregnancy for Fetus and Neonate. There are a VARS data review from American Journal of OBGYN for the flu shot in pregnancy. That basically is going through any reported side effects or complications from the flu shot. And it's a really good article to read as well. Well. There is an article, Safety of Tdap in Pregnancy, Pregnancy Outcomes After Tdap Vaccination or the PIPS study, Infant Outcomes After Tdap Vaccination in Pregnancy, and then just some general information from the American College of Nurse Midwives, the American College of OBGYN for immunization in general, flu vaccine in pregnancy, and then the Backstory All study that I talked about a little bit earlier. I've also linked a lot of resources from the CDC regarding flu vaccine in pregnancy, as well as ACOG information on Tdap and influenza in pregnancy. So there you go. That is all you need to know. If somebody says flu vaccine or Tdap or any of these things have never been tested in pregnancy, it's absolutely false. I just gave you a whole list of studies on this exact topic. Myth busting number two, the flu vaccine causes miscarriage. This misconception is based on a single underpowered study, which unfortunately has sparked a large amount of rhetoric that is really inaccurate. At some point, I can do an entire video on this study and how it has been inappropriately used to make a conclusion that it was not powered to make. But the short of this is, this is a study which was designed to look at something else. And in post hoc analysis, meaning after they had looked at that, they also looked at this. They found 21 incidences of miscarriage that they were able to say, maybe could be related to the flu vaccine. The problem is we have a lot of other studies which can't back up this claim. And this is a very small number with a lot of confounding factors that weren't controlled for. Again, I can do a whole video on this sometime if you all are interested, but the TLDR of that is that this is an unsubstantiated claim that is being made from a study which really didn't have the ability to make that 
assumption of a causal link between a flu shot and miscarriage. So this is an unsubstantiated claim. We recommend the flu shot at any point in pregnancy. I have personally gotten a flu shot in every single one of my pregnancies as soon as it was available because I see the harmful effects of influenza for people who are pregnant. I have watched people intubated in the ICU have a stillbirth because of influenza and that is terrifying. And this is something we know is linked. Really severe illness causes really sick moms and really sick babies. And if we can prevent that, we have to do that. So I always, always, always recommend flu shot in pregnancy as soon as it is available. As always, this is not specific medical advice for you. This is simply meant to empower you and educate you and give you some talking points to bring up with your doctor or advanced practice provider. I recommend flu shot and Tdac in almost every single patient who walks through my clinic who is pregnant and Rogam in anybody who has a negative blood type. There are some other vaccines which we would recommend under specific instances, but for the most part, these are the three that you should be expecting your doctor or advanced practice provider to bring up in pregnancy. Thank you for being here today. I hope you learned something. If you're not subscribed, I'd love for you to be here. Hit that subscribe button and I will see you next Monday.